Good morning. Wow, what a wonderful service already this morning, and faith and hope has arised, and uh, let hope rise up, you know, and I, I went, that song, I was just thinking, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hallelujah. When hope is there, then faith begins to rise up, and uh, nothing's impossible with God. Praise the Lord. It's wonderful to be back, and uh, honestly, when we have come back, and this is the service, it's like we've come to a different church. The reason is because the Holy Spirit is really, really moving, and I thank the Lord for that. And uh, we thank the Lord for your prayers through the whole mission. Uh, it's been two weeks of teaching, and then we had uh, a week ago the uh, Saturday graduation, which we had over 600 uh, people at. And uh, the reason, nobody really counted all the people, but we had to feed a meal to all the people, and they, they served over 650 meals. But everybody didn't eat. so. But they had enough for, they had food left over. They had, they had to kill goats and sheep and, and uh, uh, they, uh, one cow they bought and, you know, all this kinds of stuff. And it's just amazing, the chef preparing all that. Anyway, that, that was amazing there. And then at the graduation, the students preached the gospel to half the people who have never even heard the gospel or even know what it is. Uh, but they were there at the ceremony, and they heard, and we saw God do tremendous things. And then the Sunday, which was a week ago only, it seems like we've been back for a long time, but it was just last Sunday that we had, we were in Kenya, and uh, it was just an outpouring. It's like the heavens were open last Sunday uh, in Kenya, and something was really happening. And uh, we'll be sharing more. Sandy and I, we haven't even figured out when, but we'll show some slides and things like that. Um, but today, I've been instructed to do a short word, and uh, because we have a lot of things going on, and it is, and the, the word is called the open heavens, and to be a specific word also uh, for eldership, and what a privilege we have today to appoint uh, as a congregation and as the leaders, the elders, appointing Tim uh, to be an elder of the local church. So last Sunday in Kenya, we were there, and uh, with technology, we heard what happened here on the day. And it was amazing because, you know, WhatsApp, everybody's putting this, this person got healed, this happened, this happened, and God did this, and we didn't have a sermon, and, and you know, all this stuff. And we said, the same thing is happening right here. What's, go what's going on? And uh, it, it really was the heavens were opened here and there, and God began to pour out his spirit and his best blessings, and what we said with the song that you said spiritual rain let the rain fall let the floodgates come and I thought wow that's something one of the major teachings we brought this time was called three baptisms and three baptisms are absolutely necessary for revival or for the open heavens to come to have God pour out his blessing, he has provided us with three, three baptisms for the floodgates of heaven were opened and rain came after the, the three baptisms took place. And I just want to share about that as open heavens and the three baptisms. And I got one scripture, uh, a lot of verses, but one, one portion of scriptures. It's found in Matthew chapter 3. And this is where uh, John the Baptist is, and uh, uh, he, he's there in verse 1, and he says, In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is the one who was spoken by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his 
pass straight. And so we see this John the Baptist in the very beginning of what was, was going on, and he, he was even prophesied in the Old Testament to come and prepare the, the way of the Lord, and the first way of the Lord even coming into your life and being there is repent. Repent is, is, is the first act of believing, because you wouldn't repent if you didn't believe that Jesus took your, your sins. But the first act of believe, really believing, yes, is repent. Turn from your sins. Confess your sins and get it right. And that's what was happening in, in, in John the Baptist's time. So we jump to verse 11 of Matthew 3. And he says this, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who comes after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to even carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. We talked about fire here today. Three baptisms, water baptism, baptism of the Holy Spirit, baptism in fire. And he talks about the fire in verse 12. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And that fire, that baptism of fire is a purification. It's being purified more and more and more. And then Jesus came, verse 13, from Galilee to Jordan to John to be baptized by him. And, of course, Jesus didn't need to be baptized. He didn't even need to repent. He was without sin. And John would have, verse 14, would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. Do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Praise God. Why do we need to have the three baptisms? Because Jesus is the example, number one. He got baptized in water. He got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And right after he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, he was led into the wilderness and he was purified, but he didn't even need that. But that's an example for us that we will be purified, we will be tested, we will be tried. And it's a continuous fire that goes on. Then he consented, in verse 16, and here it is. And when Jesus was baptized, that is in water, immediately he went up from the water, hallelujah, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. Wow, the heavens were torn open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. It was not a dove. It was something more spectacular than that, <laughs> It was the Holy Spirit. It was like the flight of a dove, one version says, where it came soaring and landed on him and coming to rest on him. And then, behold, verse 17, a voice from heaven. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The voice of God. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you get the voice of God speaking to you. And he will even say to each one of you that's been baptized, that's been baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Spirit, he say, hey, you are my son. I am well pleased with you. You are my daughter. I am well pleased with you. Hallelujah. And then he leads you into the baptism of fire. Three baptisms. I just thinking they're necessary. Why have them? Number one is because Jesus was the example. Number two is because he commanded it. He even said when he gave the great commission, go into all the world, preach the gospel. But he said just before that, after just before he went to heaven, he says, but wait until you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, because without the power, you can't do it. You can't even hardly hear his voice. But when filled with the Holy Spirit, wow, it's just amazing, amazing thing what God does in your life. And you get filled with power, and it's a continuous thing. You continuously fill up. You fill up. And then 
the, the fire baptism, which we'll talk about in just, just a moment. I was thinking, he said the example, he said commanded it, and then he says you need it for revival. You need it for the last time, last days that I live in. Just think of it this way. Water baptism and repentance is you in Jesus. But he man is in Christ. He's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things become new. Where the baptism of the Holy Spirit is God in you. He comes into you and fills you up. It's kind of like we explained with, to the Messiah when we were teach, teaching this a little bit or had the idea shared with a couple of students. It's like a big sponge. In fact, I was going to do, do this as an example for them because they love examples, but we couldn't, I couldn't find a big sponge and I didn't bring one along. But a big sponge, okay, it's dry and everything. You put it in the water and it's in the water, but when you bring it out, all the water's in it. And it's dripping and flowing all over the place like rivers of living water. Hallelujah. You in Christ and Christ in you. Hallelujah. And that's the baptism of repentance of water and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But then you got the fire. It truly is a purifying like gold, it says. It brings you into trials and tests and temptations. I always just think of James, it's just mind-boggling. He says, count it all joy when you fall into these trials and problems and situations. Uh, why? Because it's going to make your faith stronger. Why? Because you're going to be purified. Why? Because when you pass the test, you are stronger and ready to do great things for God. Praise the Lord. I think of the fire in Daniel, you know, when they were thrown into the fire and it didn't even hurt them. It's purified. It's us in the fire, but the biggest thing that comes out is the fire is in you. Wow. I mean, isn't that amazing? Do you have the fire of God in you ready to go? Man, I'm ready to do anything. That's what the fire that's what the baptism of fire does. And when Jesus came out of the fire, he was in the power, came out of the, the wilderness, he was in, in the fire, and the first thing he did is he went into the temple and he says, hey, look at this verse here, the reading of the day, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, call me to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, to do this, raise the dead, da 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 He had the fire, and God wants you to have that fire. And be ready and see the miracles and the signs that God has. Thank you, Lord. So I believe, personally, it's just maybe, I don't know. I believe last Sunday was something very, very important. I believe it was a beginning for us church and the church in Kenya that it's the beginning of revival. The beginning of God's outpouring, the open heavens opening up. And pouring down these miracles and signs. And the biggest, greatest thing is the outpouring of people getting saved. Not just in here, but out on the streets, here and there. there and this building is going to be way too small for us. And that would be a repeat of the 1800s. This building got to be too small. And they had to move out of it. I don't know if that will happen, but God's got something going good here. And today we come to a time where we are appointing a new elder. And I was thinking about, you know, the apostles and through the book of Acts, every time they saw a group of people, the, the, the apostles, they would, they would teach them and so on, and then they would appoint elders. Because elder, it, it can't be just a free-for-all. There's got to be leaders. And God has that for us. And the Apostle Peter, he gives some advice to the elders of the church, but also he gives advice to the church of how to treat elders and what to do. And he wants us all to understand and for us to, to pray for and believe 
for the elders. And as Tim takes his role, there's going to be attacks from the enemy of the baptism of fire. Sorry, Tim. (laughs) And we need to pray for him regularly and pray for wisdom and especially uh, pray for the, the flock, us, to follow him and to submit to him and to submit to the leadership of the church which brings unity together. And so I want to read just one portion of the elders because I really believe today is a day, another Sunday, of where there's outpouring of God and we're moving on into this revival or the great outpouring that the Bible talks about in the end times. It's found in 1 Peter chapter 5. And uh, it's quite, it's just information, verse four verses. It says, I exhort the elders among you as, fellow, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. So Peter says himself, I am an elder. It's not a calling, it's an appointment into a position. And he has an elder, and Tim's got a calling. I don't know exactly what it is. It may be in teaching and this and this and this. But nevertheless, the appointment into leadership, Peter said, I'm an elder as well as a fellow elder. And then he gives, and this will be fast, he gives seven things to do. And the first one is in verse 2. He says, shepherd the flock of God. That is among you. And so he says, care for the sheep. Shepherd the flock of God. When we're in Kenya, we have absolutely no problem uh, understanding sheep stories. In fact, I've learned a lot from them because they're all shepherds. And when it says shepherd the flock, they know exactly what you're talking about. They're not even thinking as an elder of a church or elder of a church, oh, I'm going to run the services. It's care for the sheep. And they know how to care for the sheep, how to take care of the sheep. What they do, and one of their major things is to make them healthy so that they can reproduce. Wow. And that's what we got to do. We're the flock. We need to reproduce, taking the gospel to the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And care for them. And then he, he, he says that... Uh, and uh, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, not because you have to, but willingly, as God would have you. Not for gain, and he calls it shameful gain. Because there are, I can tell you, I've seen many elders that are in it for the gain. But this isn't it. It's because you want to care and take care of the flock of God. And do it eagerly. Chapter, verse 3. Not domineering over those you are in charge. Not lording it over. Not being, oh, I'm the big guy. I don't see any of this in Tim. Thankful. But be examples. And this is probably one of the most important one of all. Of the things he tells us as elders. And that is... Be an example. Lead by example. An example. Be a servant leadership by example. Be an example of a servant. I think of Romans 1 1, a key verse in Kenya for us. And it says, Paul, he says, a servant of Jesus Christ. And that's what we are. We're being appointed into servanthood of Jesus Christ. And the great promise, when the chief shepherd, verse 4, appears, which is Jesus Christ, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Wow. There's a special crown for you as a shepherd, as a elder of Jesus Christ. And then it says, and when he appears, and it's soon. 
lead as if he was coming tomorrow. Hallelujah. Lead and be prepared and look forward to Jesus returning to this earth because the earth is going to be in shambles with all the countries and then Jesus comes and he puts it all right. Hallelujah. That would be wonderful because only he knows what justice is. So this morning we're having an induction service where he's being inducted into a position. We have a commissioning service where he's being commissioned into his calling and everything he's doing. And we have an appointment for that position recognized by the whole flock. And so closing today, this is the instructions that Peter closes with in his second chapter. He says this in verse, chapter 3, verse 18, but grow, this is to everybody, in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and, today, and to the day of eternity. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. We come to the uh, induction, commissioning, and appointing of Tim as the uh, one of the elders of the church. Tim, if you'd like to come forward. Uh, please, that's great. Uh, can we have uh, Steve, Steve Kemp, Neville and Luther with us as well? Please, we are the eldership of the church. Uh, if you'd like to come forward too, that would be great. Uh, can, can we leave the applause until the very end? Otherwise, we'll probably be get loads of it. Uh, so... Um, this is a really, really serious and important and precious time that we come to. Uh, and part of this is recognizing what God has already been um, bringing through and growing in Tim's life, which is that calling to be an elder. And we've been actually working with Tim and he's been meeting with us and we've been, he's actually been in the elders meetings for some months now uh, and just getting the sense of, uh, and he's taking it very seriously with Nicky and prayed about this when I spoke to him uh, and take, took quite some time over it and then came back and said, this is something I really want to embrace and step into. I believe it's the call of God on my life. So this was a very, very real, seriously prayed through decision that Tim made. It was a really seriously prayed through request that we made because it's a high calling of high leadership in the body of Christ. So we're absolutely delighted that Tim accepted that and Nikki with him as well. And we, uh, first of all, going to be uh, asking Tim some questions. This is a bit like you have with a wedding. When you have a wedding, you know, they make vows. Uh, they make promises, the bride to the groom and the groom to the bride, before God. And this is what we're going to do as part of this uh, induction uh, with Tim as well. And I have some questions here for Tim um, that I'd like him to answer. And you can speak it into the... So first of all, Tim, have you committed your life to following Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I have. And have you been filled with the Holy Spirit and are committed to be led by the Holy Spirit? I have. Amen. He's good at it. He liked that, didn't he? I certainly have. <laughs> and do you commit to serve the Lord as an elder in this church? I do. Do you promise to help lead and care for the members of this church by the grace of God. I do. By the grace of God. Do you promise to help serve and equip the members of this church by the grace of God? I do. Do you promise to pray for, love, and lead this church by the grace of God? I do. Do you commit to serve alongside your fellow elders Steve Moss, Neville Strickland, Steve Kemp, and Luther Meyer as the apostolic elder. I do. 
Now I'm going to speak to you as the church. And that question is, do you... Uh, it's, I'm going to explain it first and do the question. The question is, do you commit and accept Tim as an elder in this church? Will you support him and pray for him and be led by him? This is your commitment to this. If we do all of this and you don't do your part in supporting, caring and accepting him, then he shouldn't be here. Because this is family. This is family. Okay. So... We're all involved and part of the process. So this is what I'd like to say to you. Do you accept him as an elder in this church? Yes. Will you support him and pray for him? Yes. Will you allow him to bring wisdom and leadership into your life? Yes. Amen. So now we've answered all the questions. Now we're going to appoint and commission Tim in this special, special, special role. Calling, it's not actually a role, it's a calling. So Tim, in the name of Jesus, and by the power of that name, in this church, as the pastor of the church, I anoint you, I anoint you to the position, calling, and role of eldership, in Fowl Christian Service Church. I ask that God pour out his Holy Spirit upon you, that the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom to lead you and guide you in the decisions you make, that he will give you grace to be gracious and loving towards the people, that he will give you power to be a vessel for God to move among the people, and that he will fill you with his love so the enemy will not be able to steal from you the anointing he's given you. Be anointed in the name of Jesus. Amen. I like all the, all the elders are going to... Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> all the elders will all lay hands on Tim just and pray for him right now. And if any of the elders has a, a prophetic word, just feel free to do that. Let's just do that now. just have a scripture for you, Tim. It's from Hebrews 13.20. It says, May the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work, to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, yes. through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 And finally, I'd like for Nikki to come up. Nikki is uh, obviously essential to this calling and this work. Nikki said yes to this position and calling for Tim, and both of them had to be in agreement for him to be able to take that. So we want to pray for Nikki, and I'm also going to anoint you, Nikki, as well, because as Tim's wife, you are his apart from the Lord, his best and greatest support. And you'll stand with him, you'll walk with him, you'll, you'll face victories and blessings and difficulties and troubles, but you will do it together because he called you together in the first place and you are together now in this. So let's just pray for Nikki. Nikki, I anoint you in the name of Jesus for that wonderful, wonderful ministry of being an elder's wife that you will be with him, that you'll share with him, that you'll support him and care for him, that you'll respect him and lift him up, that you will be with him, one with him in this. I pray for the grace of God, the love of God, the strength of God, uh, the wisdom of God to be for you as well. You will be there with him when he shares only with you and you alone some of the struggles that he has. And you'll walk through it together. You're going to see both of you great, great victories. You will have some hard times, Nikki, but the grace of God poured into your heart and life will overshadow them as if they were nothing. And for you, Tim, as well, as you come into this and walk into this role, you're going to see great things you have never seen before. You're going 
going to see massive things that I will do, says the Lord. I will work in you and through you beyond what you can even ask or imagine. As you step up for this, not only will I equip you and make you holy and, and direct you, but I will work through you in great power. Know this, this is not just a responsibility. This is an adventure. And you have stepped into the kingdom adventure of eldership. Enjoy it and, and, and just walk through it with great joy. That we ask in Jesus' name. And all the saints together said? Amen. And did a big clap offering. Yeah, you can hear your applause now. So, wonderful, 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 wonderful day. It's a great step in our church and in the life of our church and the, the growth and future of our church as well. Uh, and God's in the very center of that. Uh, we are going to ask Tim as his first officiating ministry to bring us communion or lead us into communion this morning. Uh, so, let's just close our eyes for a moment now. When we see seasons in the life of a person or an individual or a marriage or a family or a church, we know they come and go. And we've heard very clearly and experienced for ourselves, we are at the beginning of a new season, a season of life, of the work and move of the Holy Spirit, a season of growth. We've had families coming into our church in the last several months. We've seen great and mighty things. And this season is also a season for new and fresh things in our leadership. So at the beginning of a season, we can be excited. At the beginning of a season, anything is possible. At the beginning of a season, we are looking ahead and not behind. And we are in a new season, part of which has been prepared in advance for Tim to be working with us to see this ushered in and flourish, that we might move into what God has us. So, Father, you said today, wind and fire, let's change everything and look to you that we can indeed walk in the season you have for us. And we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Tim.